Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from the artists for week two of KCCK's 2023 Jazz Into the Stars. If you're watching the video, you can see that I am uh, proudly displaying the newest edition of the KCCK section collection of t-shirts, the one that says Good Vibes, and that just seemed appropriate because I've got the Diplomats of Solid Sound in the house. Hi there. Nate Basinger and Forrest Husingfeld, welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's nice to see you both. It's been a while. I had to go back into the archives. Nate, it has been since 2008 since we had the Diplomats at Jazz Under the Stars. Uh, and uh, and Forrest, I think the last time you were on our stage was with the Uniphonics, right? Yep, 2014, I believe. So uh, so it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, but it's great to have you back. I'm so excited to get the Diplomats back on the KCCK Jazz Under the Stars stage. It'll look a little different. It's in a different spot than uh, than it was previously, but uh, we've uh, had good luck in the new location. Uh, as I said, it's week two, and uh, so the Diplomats, before the uh, before we rolled tape, I was you know, had to go back into my Diplomats history a little bit because uh, the Diplomats were, uh, were a real big going concern in uh, Iowa City and you know all over the Midwest for a long time, and then uh, people kind of moved away, as happens. When did the band, Nate, get back together? Um, we, uh, in 2018, Pravda record label approached us to do a record, a full length record. And, um, we started working on that, uh, that winter, um, was it winter 2018? I think so. Yeah. And, um, I remember cause I was at the time I was living in Texas and I flew, it was flew into O'Hare and it was like snowing and Kathy one of the singers Kathy Russo and I drove to the rehearsal from Chicago in like a snowstorm <laughs> to to go and work on these songs so we were like what are we what were we thinking but we're glad that we we made the trip cuz uh, I think a pretty good record came out of it yeah what was it like to get that call i mean to have been you know you probably i know that i know the band got together you know periodically uh, with at least some of the original members through the, those years. But to get that call from the record company saying, yeah, we need you to do something for us. They'd kind of been after us for a little while, so it wasn't a huge surprise. But finally, there was they were the instigator to like actually, okay, it's time to actually do something. We've been talking about this for two years, three years, or whatever. Do you guys want to do this or not? And so called up. You know, Nate and Kathy was in Chicago at the, living at the time, and we sort of kind of got on a phone call and tried to figure out how we are going to coordinate all these pieces. Abby was in Des Moines, still is. Sarah's in Cedar Rapids, uh, everybody else in Iowa City. And everybody was on board, so then it was a matter of trying to get everyone in the same place at the same time. And that happened, I, I think it was January of... 18 when that went and then then once we got all that together then we ran into a snowstorm but fortunately it worked out and leading up to that point we'd been sending files back and forth on drive trying to construct songs remotely and, and pre pre pandemic we were ahead of the curve i was going right. to say which was a lot which was a lot more creative back in 2018 right. before the pandemic right. years ahead of yeah. the curve forrest how long have you been with the band uh the first show I played, I think, was 2012. And I know we're recording this the evening that Ragbri is in Coralville, and I just got a 10-year notification on social media that of a post that I made that we were playing, Diplomats were playing Ragbri 10 years ago, <laughs> like today, <laughs> in Knoxville, Iowa. Oh, wow. So we are also due for a Ragbri gig, if anybody <laughs> out there is listening. <laughs> yeah, but not tonight. <laughs> right. That, yeah, not, not tonight. Somebody no. else can do it in yeah. the 100-degree heat. And not on August. And not on August 10th, please. <laughs> not on August 10th. Please, please, please also, no bicycle gigs on August 10th. That, <laughs> that's all I ask. Um, Nate, as uh, one of the founding members of the band, for those who aren't familiar, which is kind of hard for me to imagine anybody in our area not being familiar with the Diplomats, and anybody who listens to KCCK, uh, because we've always played the music, kind of describe the, uh, uh, how the band came together and what was the, you know, what was the idea uh, behind the Diplomats of Solid Sound? What kind of music were you after? Sure. Play. Um, interestingly enough, I'm not a founding member of the band. Uh, Pat White was the first person to play oh, okay. keyboards in the band, um, but I have played in the band since '98 or '99. So I don't know which one of those years. It's a it's a blur. 
<laughs> um, but uh, when the band was started, it was an instrumental um, quartet, and uh, it it shared kind of equal parts. Um, the ventures, you know, like surf, 60s surf music, it shared, shared equal parts, maybe the ventures, Booker T and the MG, and then maybe just a little bit of those classic, like, um, Hammond organ jazz records, you know, like, uh, like a, your Jimmy Smith. So it kind of started out, um, equal parts of those three influences. Um, but then our, our kind of interpretations of, of those types of songs, I mean, we played some covers, but really quickly, you know, it became, apparent that it's just going to be easier to write our own songs than to actually learn real songs um so pretty quickly you know we we um developed like we, or we built like a pretty big repertoire of these like little two minute <laughs> songs that you could you know um you know that you could extend if you had to and we played a lot of uh um these little I don't know, we played a, we played a, you know a lot of rock clubs we traveled quite a bit um we would we would be on a lot of bills with um these retro bands so it would be like we would be one of the retro bands maybe there'd be a surf band maybe there'd be a rockabilly band um and I always kind of joked I was like you know it's like you know next thing we know there's gonna be like a, a civil war recreationist band you know you know I was just like what is this you know it's like you know we would travel to some town and and it was just always like whatever miscellaneous you know retro band that the club owners could think of they'd put a bill together and the diplomats would be on it and you know and it was it was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun you know to to do those kinds of shows although uh moving you know a Hammond organ around and all these like crummy rock clubs with you know stairs and stuff um, was <laughs> that wasn't as much fun but yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the joke is always why didn't I take up the flute well I think uh, yeah th- there's that and also it's like the joke I always would like to say is like well I mean it's like you know come for the show and then stay for the music the show of course being like watching these like three guys try to three or four guys try to put this ham and organ on on a on a stage you know and you know advancing those shows was always fun too because you'd call up a club and you'd be like okay hey you know we're you know we're diplomats of solid sound we're gonna you know be there at such and such time you know to load in and then it's like could you describe your stage to us and you know some bartender would be like what and he'd be like well you know for instance how many stairs roughly would you do? You, would you say it would be you know to, to get on top of the stage? How many steps would you say from the door to such? A, are, would there be any tight angles? And and <laughs> and like bartenders would would answer. They'd be like, well, just how drunk are you planning on getting? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you're just like, oh, oh, I, well, here we should probably you know preface this by saying that we have to bring this gigantic Hammond organ uh, into the into the club, you know. And, and then they're just like, man, they have keyboards now. I mean, what? what? Well, I, I was gonna ask. You don't you don't travel with the with the mighty B three all all the time, right? Now, uh, or do you most not, of the time still? Not all the I time. I don't think it was. I don't think it was on um, the stage plot for Jazz into the Stars. Every, every gig this year has had a the Leslie though. Yeah, it's it's sort of. Um, I've been using different keyboards this year. Um, oh, but plugging now, in, plugging someone, into the Leslie. If yeah, someone but, out there in Radio Land, you know. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Wants to bring their Hammond organ to the show. Um, I and, and has a know, forklift. And will move it. Ah, forklift. That's a whole other story we can get into. Like the proper way to fork <laughs> Hammond organ onto a stage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could write a book, right? Um, but yeah, um, I don't think I'll. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring an organ to the show, but probably not. Probably. Forrest, how has the uh, how has the music changed over the years since you've been with the band? That's a good question. I don't know that it's necessarily changed that much because uh, the three original singers are still involved, so the songs are still coming from the same individuals. Doug Roberson, who's basically the the godfather of the band. He's the only person that's been on every single song. Nate's been on ninety nine point nine percent of the songs because you mentioned that you're not an yeah, original yeah, yeah. founding member, but right. you're on all the albums. Yeah, so it's and like, yeah, there's one de- song I think I'm not yeah, playing on. It depends on like how you define, you know, founding and uh, original and whatever. So because the elements are still there, you can tell it's still the band. Uh, the last record has some more Americana flavors to it, I would say, than the previous albums. Um, other than that, I, I think it's, and obviously having singers, 
the first, what, three albums were all instrumental. And there's a chance that another instrumental album could come out as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's changed substantially since 2011 or whenever What Goes Around Comes Around came about. Do you think so, Nate? Do you think the sound has changed that much? No. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's the, same, yeah. the same people, you know, involved. The well, same. You, 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 found, yeah. you found your groove. Right, right, right. And speaking of the groove, as the as the drummer, tell me about, uh, I mean, it sounds like the, the band has always, you know, bridged several different styles. Mm. Uh, how does that challenge or reward you as the drummer, you know, keeping, you know, keeping everybody in line? Yeah. No, I, I absolutely love playing in this band because it's as a drummer, it's a whole lot of fun to do James Brown style grooves. But then there's a lot of Latin jazz influence, like Ray Charles types of drum grooves as well. So there's a big variety. But what it has in common is that it's all danceable and it's fun sounding. And it doesn't doesn't really matter who you are. If you're a little kid, you get to see little kids dancing at our shows all the time. And then if you're, you know, a senior citizen, uh, they sort of something. In oh, memory that ventures cued. that surf rock thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right in the pocket. Yeah, definitely. yeah. It it kind of cues a memory from early in their life of feeling good at the dance hall or whatever. So it's sort of crosses age groups and every other, you know personal characteristics but everybody it, there's something there for everybody uh, you did the uh, album for Pravda in 2018 then followed a live album which kind of came out did it come out during the pandemic or right last, after it was last year in it was last year okay April in 22 all right yeah. uh, and um, and I know that uh, the band uh, you know those releases have been really successful on streaming and you have you gotten picked up I feel like maybe you've gotten picked up and you know been on a couple of TV shows or anything like that yeah, there have been a whole lot of them, too many to count. We tried to make a list of them all <laughs> when uh, when we started, when we actually got an, a website. When the record deal happened, we decided to get an actual website and an actual Instagram account and everything, and we're advised to come up with a list of all of the TV shows and movies because it would be helpful uh, to sit for booking purposes and for other purposes, you know, just to say you might have heard us in this TV show and this, and it became quickly apparent that it it was just not gonna happen. Uh, We're not gonna come too, up with this big too many. Can you can you think? Of, are there a couple that come to mind? Yeah, Weeds. One time, uh, right before playing a show, I didn't even know that that song was in Weeds, and I was watching the episode, mm -hmm. getting ready to pass out. It's like the end of a season, season seven or something. The last show of the season and then you just hear Kathy's voice I'm not gonna try to replicate it <laughs> but it was <laughs> and then that's the end of the whole season and I was like what I didn't know that song's on there and that's happened a lot of times where you're just sitting and down and watching Netflix or something and then a song pops on there's a bunch of other ones uh, yeah there was a there was a uh, on ESPN there was they have that series of movies 30 for 30 and uh, one of the earlier movies was a movie on the Oakland Raiders and mm -hmm. um we had quite a few instrumentals in that um that show that was the first that was one of the first times where I was actually like watching something and and was like what that sounds familiar um <laughs> you know history detectives on public television was another one where I was watching that because that was the only channel I got at the time and I was like hey one of my songs is on a channel I actually get that's that <laughs> You know, call up the <laughs> call up the, the publisher and like, hey, do I do we get more money since it's a channel I actually get? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, so tell me about the show at uh, Jazz and the Stars. What can we expect? Hundred minutes of funky, <laughs> jazzy awesomeness <laughs> is what it's gonna be. Yeah, it'll be a good mix of of tunes from like all of the records because we're gonna we'll do some instrumentals um from the earlier records um they might be slightly different arrangements of them um so there'll be some opportunities for uh eddie and nolan who are playing sax with us to like stretch out um some good opportunities for them um to kind of showcase their their talents um in addition to you know all, all the singers will have their featured numbers as well um so it's you know if you've if you've 
you know, follow the band at all. I mean, you're, you know, regardless of what album is your favorite, there's going to be something um, that we're going to play off of it. Yeah, you're going to hear all the hits, and you're going to hear a lot of the stuff that have has not been played live in a long time. Nice. A lot of the old instrumentals that are fun to play, oh. fun to listen to. Excellent. Hey, before we go, you both have uh, other bands that you're in. I'm thinking about the Swampland Jewels, which has been performing a lot lately. Any other upcoming gigs you want to plug? Or other Diplomats gigs? Yeah, we've got uh, Wilton Founders Day that we're playing with. The Diplomats and, and the Uniphonics. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, double duty for Forrest. Yeah, and for <laughs> Eddie, too. I'm just pulling oh, right, up the yeah. date here. Yeah, so on August 19th, the Uniphonics and Diplomats are playing Wilton Founders Day, and it's a free outdoor thing. I think Diplomats are on at 8, Uniphonics are on at 10. So yeah, Eddie McKinley will be playing saxophone on both. I'll be playing drums in both. Uh, the Swampland Jewels have an album coming out, and that features Nate on keys and accordion and vocals, me on drums, Eddie McKinley on saxophone, Marty Christensen on bass, and Marty has been playing with bass with Diplomats as well. So this is all really easy for it's us. It's kind of like schedule. the di- it's kind of like the Diplomats without the without the vocalists, right? The yep. w- the, the, the women. You yep. kicked the women out of the band, apparently. Yep. yep. And, and Randall <laughs> well, Davis. And like, like a lot of accordion. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of accordion. <laughs> we really, also, yeah. Doug also got kicked out because he doesn't like accordion oh, as much yeah. as you need to in so, order to be a swampland. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, so it, it, none of yeah. the, these songs wouldn't be appropriate. E- everyone for, who <laughs> hates the accordion, please leave. Yeah. yeah Right, right, exactly. But there are, is also there are other keyboard instruments. It's mostly as well. a it's a, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just, I'm, you can't be everything to everybody. <laughs> Diplomats is a non-accordion band. The Swamp Plain Jewels is the accordion alternative. There you go. So, but it's it's a lot of fun playing in that group. And we have too. a record coming out in um, February. Excellent. Yeah. It's Jazz Under the Stars Week 2 with the Diplomats of Solid Sound, and our young artist this week will be Ship of Fools, which is a Cedar Rapids-based band sponsored by the um, Eastern Iowa Arts Academy. And some of the members are as young as middle school, uh, wow. but they're, they're a really good blues band. Awesome. Uh, we've had them at, uh, at our Blues of Palooza a couple of times, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very fun to uh, let them warm up the stage for our headlining act. And of course, the usual, the usual fun, all the treats, all the merch, uh, everything. I'm sure that you'll, you'll be able to go home with some Diplomats of Solid Sound merchandise as well. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank you for, for being here today. This has been a blast. It's so great to see you both. And I'm really excited about having the Diplomats back at KCCK's Jazz Under the Stars. Likewise. Thank Glad you for having back. us. Uh, if people want to find uh, the, uh, you, you, of course, you mentioned website and Instagram and all of that. If they want to find the Diplomats online, what's the best way to do it? Diplomatsofsolidsound.com. And on Instagram and Facebook, we are Diplomats of Solid Sound. Technically, there's no the but we will not be offended if we're called the Diplomats of Sound. Oh, Sound. okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Note note to Dennis to uh, make sure the <laughs> stage introduction is done correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, you know, we probably won't edit all of the thes out of this interview either. <laughs> <laughs> we we catch ourselves. Nate, Nate called it the diplomats of solid sound during this interview. So it's, it's, it's old habits die hard. Why well, it's proper English. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for being here. It's going to be a blast. Thanks. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 10.30 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast app. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.